Welcome to today's episode, and we're going to be talking about pink pickled eggs. So stay tuned, and we've got a recipe we'll walk you through to do about two quarts, and you can upscale it, downscale it as you see fit. And I don't know any better time uh, to make pink pickled eggs than uh, in the fall, really November through April time, actually. And uh, they make a great addition to uh, festive deviled eggs around the Christmas time and New Year's. So if you like beets and you like red onions and you like eggs, uh, stay tuned and we're going to dive right in. So we're going to bring a pot of water to a boil. I like to add a cup of vinegar to that and then just start uh, placing the eggs in the water and that will cool the temperature off but you're going to bring it back to a full rolling boil and you want to keep an eye out for eggs that have cracks in them and sometimes you can't see these until you put them in the hot boiling water and then the crack becomes obvious so you can't see that but then when I put it back in there it becomes real obvious as soon as I set it in the water. So then we're just gonna cover it, bring it back up to a full rolling boil, and then we're gonna let it boil for, at my elevation, about 12 minutes. Uh, you may get away with eight or need to go 15, but um, you want them fully cooked, but not green on the inside. So then we're gonna take them to the sink, empty the hot water, add cold water, maybe wash these a couple times with cold water and let them cool. And while we're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the beet juice and we're gonna tear out our measuring device and then we're gonna add about a cup of beet juice, typically uh, from canned or jarred pickled beets. And then the next thing we're gonna do, and the reason we're weighing this out is that we want to add ascorbic acid to it to bring down the pH in the liquid so that it's closer to the pH of 5% vinegar. And so we're just gonna calculate that. You can do this for yourself. And uh, we're gonna add some granulated uh, ascorbic acid. So we've got 163 grams of beet juice. And this is what we're using, fruit fresh, but it's ascorbic acid. And we're gonna add enough to bring that up to at least 5% ascorbic acid by weight. Get out your trusty calculator and we can calculate what we need. We started with 163 grams of beet juice. We're gonna multiply that by 0.05 and that's going to tell us that we need eight a little over eight grams added back to the 163 so if we have a total weight of 171 we should be at five percent we're at 174 grams so we're good we're at least uh five percent ascorbic acid by weight so we're not gonna use the rest of the tablespoon. So for us, that was a little over a tablespoon of ascorbic acid, but you really need to weigh it out uh, in grams to understand uh, what the percent weight is. Then we're just gonna add this to a saucepan and kind of put it on low and let it be warming up. Then we're gonna break out the 5% white vinegar and we're going to start measuring this out and we're just going to add in this case one cup at a time uh, to the saucepan to bring it up to temperature just so that it's hot it does not need to boil uh, you just want it to be hot when you're adding it to the eggs everything should be you know warm and uh, when we're going to put these in the jar so we're going to add the second cup And now we're gonna slice up an onion. You can do this, you know, you could dice this or do it however you like, but I like to slice it. We're gonna add uh, some Himalayan sea salt 
into our mixture and we're going with one tablespoon per quart. This recipe is designed for two quarts and so we're using two tablespoons of Himalayan sea salt. Voila, we diced our onion and we're gonna layer these in the jar once we get ready to pack along with our beets. And this is gonna add color. And one of the things you'll notice about these eggs, and I really think adding the vinegar to the boiling water helps, is we didn't have any eggs where we had problems peeling them. And we do always uh, crack ours from the large end of the egg, because you can see where the air bubble uh, is in that. And if you're unsure on how long to boil your eggs, you may want to cut one open and check it, make sure there's not a deep green ring on the out outer edge of the yolk. And if there's not, then you're good to go. You have some beautiful pickled eggs. So we're just gonna bring the sauce up to temperature. We've had our quart jars in the oven at 250 degrees. Uh, while we're preparing this, 250 Fahrenheit. And now we're just gonna set those out and start layering in the ingredients. We're gonna start with our hard boiled eggs. Then we're gonna layer in few beet slices. And if you like a redder color, just add more beets. You can also add another cup of uh, beet juice that you've added the ascorbic acid to. And then you just basically layer this stuff in the way that you like. And so we're gonna use red onions uh, and beets in ours and just keep laying, layering them in there. So I think we got about you know, eight to nine eggs per quart in these quart jars, and they don't have to be full to the top. You do want to make sure that when we cover them with um, the hot liquid that they end up having the eggs completely covered by the liquid. And if you only want to do half a dozen, that's fine. They just simply need to be covered uh, with the hot brine liquid. And if you have half gallon containers, you can use the same recipe. We'll do a half gallon or two quarts. And you can upsize it if you're wanting to do, you know, four or six or how many ever quarts you're wanting to do. You can just multiply the, the brine recipe to get there. All right, so we're just about got the second quart load it up and they look ready for some brine And then you're just gonna ladle the brine or funnel it into uh, your jars. You do wanna leave a little bit of head space um, at the top, but we're not gonna be canning these. This, this recipe is intended to be kept in the refrigerator. Um, so we're not gonna be pressure canning or water bath canning these. So the head space is not super critical, but you are gonna want a little bit of room and to make certain that all of the eggs are covered with the brine by the time that you're done.
Okay, so now we're gonna be adding dill seed to each quart. We're gonna be using one half of a teaspoon in each jar. You can kind of do this to taste however you prefer. Um, you could use dill weed or dill heads if you have those. It really just season it to your taste. We're going with a half a teaspoon of uh, dill seeds. Now, one of the things that'll happen is you're gonna have some little air bubbles that are between the eggs and the beets and the onions, etc. And you'll wanna use a debubbling tool. In this case, I'm just using a stainless steel knife and uh, it works perfectly fine uh, to get the bubbles out. And later you're gonna shake this as well. And turn it every now and then, then that'll keep the bubbles from staying in one spot in your container. Pretty. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the recipe and I hope you take some time uh, to make you up a batch of eggs. And of course, if you don't want to dive into uh, doing two quarts, you can just cut the recipe in half and do one quart. And you can also uh, use two cans of beets instead of one. So if you're looking for that extra magenta, dark pink or bright pink color, uh, you can just double the beet juice and um, it'll work out fine. So, and that's what we've done here. So they're gonna be great. We're really looking forward to them. Uh, here at Christmas. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and take a moment and hit the subscribe button. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you have comments, please leave those. We do try and get back uh, to people on their comments in a timely manner. And remember, anytime you can, get up, get out, live a little. See ya. Okay. The NVMe blower style heat sink is installed and we are booting up. We've got it run over to the four pin PWM fan header two. And I don't know if you can tell, but that fan.